Hello, everyone. Hello. Last week we spoke about our image of God and we thought to linger a little bit uh, at that theme and uh, look uh, at it from a bit of a different angle today. We're going to read a poem where it touches on this theme of the image of God, but from a very creative point of view. Uh, often, art helps us to understand things better. I think it's Christian Wyman who said, art is often better at theology than theology is. Um, and in this poem, you can see that because it tells something of a very dynamic fluid image of God and also very personal very personal, very personal um, uh, needs uh, of somebody that they they feel they need from God mm. of God and that's often how our image of God grows or expands or changes mm. Um, mm. when it touches on 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 this need, this longing that we have. Mm. Yeah, I think like we said last week in terms of when our image of God is very constricted and, and, and n narrow and we have an image of an angry God and we're fearful of God, then we um, we struggle with, with needs and desires inside ourselves that we actually feel a, a big void in our lives mm. that we sort of instinctively knows comes from from our relationship with God that there's something there and we don't really know where to where to start looking and maybe if we can um, entertain an, a, a more open view and, and, and maybe look at our, our learned uh, image of God and maybe ask God to show us something wider maybe look at how at our, what, our, what we would need from God um, mm. Mm. And, and sit with it before God and see. And it doesn't imply a manipulating of God uh, and say, God, I don't like this to happen or that to happen. Can you please change so that it suits me better? No. Uh, no. It, it's, it's, it's more that it, it, it's a feeling that God is missing in, in, in my life, more in areas of my life. And, I, and this image that I have of God, I can't... Um, it doesn't fit over these the void. Mm. Um, mm. So it's it's like finding God where where I don't know where God is. Mm. With a small image of God, big parts of my life is no God's land. Yeah, uh, we don't think that God can be there. Um, mm. It's not his department, so to speak. Mm. Or territory. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we are on our own in yes, those areas. Yes. Uh, and this poem by Christine Walters Paintner touches on all these issues. Can you read it for us, please? Mm. The title of the poem is Please Can I Have a God? Please Can I Have a God? Not fossilized, hardened, stiff, unshaken, not contained in creeds and testimonies, judgments and stone tablets, but in the wound breaking open. Please, can I have a God who asks me to worship at the altar of mystery, to lay aside certainty and curl up in the hollow of a great stone down by the river, to hear the force of it rushing past. Please, can I have a God with questions rather than answers, who is not rock or fortress or father, but sachets, swerves, ripens, rages at the rate of the earth? Please, can I have a God whose voice is the sound of a girl, long silent from abuse, now speaking her first word, who is not sweetness or light, but the fierce utterance of no in all the places where love has been extinguished. Please, can I have a God, the color of doubt, the shape of uncertainty, 
who sees that within me dwells a multitude, grief and joy, envy and generosity, rage and raucousness, and anoints every last part. Please, can I have a God who rolls her eyes with me at platitudes and pronouncements and walks by my side in the early morning across the wet field, together barefooted and broken-hearted, who is both mud and dew? Please, can I have a God who is the vast indifference of forest and night sky, who is both eclipse and radiance, silence and scream, who is everything slow and dark and moist, who is not measured, controlled, but ecstatic and dancing. Please, can I have a God who is not the flame, but the flickering, not bread, but the chewing and swallowing, not lover and beloved, but the making love, not the dog, but the joyful exuberance when I come home. Phew, one can stay mm. with each stanza for long, long periods of time. Mm -hmm. We're going to post it on the blog as well, and it might be a good idea to print it out and work a little bit with it, or let it work on you, mm. uh, let it stay with you. One of the things that catches one's eye is the fact that God is also addressed here in the feminine. Mm. Mm. Please, can I have a God who rolls her eyes with me at platitudes and pronouncements? Mm. Whose voice is the sound of a girl. Often because of the patriarchal language in the Bible, that was their way of describing things, that was their viewpoint, we equate God only with being male. Mm. But we find in the Bible as well, in the Psalms and, and all over, also a lot of feminine aspects in God. And it can enrich our image of God if we look at the feminine mm. and see God as, a, mm. as, as female. Mm. If we take the metaphor as God as Father as being a, a metaphor, fact, almost. A f but if we take it as a fact mm. that God can only be mm. male or Father, then then we we have a very narrow um, uh, um, view of of where God is in what God is involved in. If we take if we could see God as Mother or as uh, Lover, Beloved. Mm. Mm. then um, there is just such a, a, a vastness that opens up mm. in, in the way that we, that we think about God, mm. and feel about God. And experience, and God, experience God, God, because often the feminine has a different touch and a different feel in the approach to things. Mm. Mm. And if we only have a male God, then there's constantly male energy in addressing problems. Mm, but mm. if there's a female, if, if we see God in the female uh, shape as well, mm. then it brings out mm. uh, care and to a, to a degree that, that mm. we, uh, we might not have experienced previously. And especially when we struggle with, our, with an image of God as... Mm. Uh, as judgmental or angry or uh, the strict father to just imagine God as, as, as mother already brings um, us closer to to experiencing God as as more as love mm, mm, mm. not that a father is not loving yes, of course yes. but I mean the, the the image of the strictness of God can can often uh, and for me personally, it, it really made it difficult for me to see that God can be loved. Mm, mm, mm. And it's also uh, interesting to notice that there's a vulnerability in God in a lot of these stanzas. 
Um, Please can I have a God whose voice is the sound of a girl long silent from abuse now speaking her first word. It's it's very vulnerable. Mm. Um, uh, a, a fragility mm. where my image of God tended to be much more forceful. Uh, Untouchable. Manipulative. Um, but here's a vulnerability. Yeah. And a God that actually experiences the rape of the earth um, strongly and, and, and rages like I want to rage about it, mm. that is touched by that. It, it's not like being separate from it, it's, it's being involved and, 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 and uh, experiencing this with me, mm. with all of us. Mm. And God often being described in the poem in verbs mm -hmm. and not in nouns mm -hmm. especially in this this very last stuff mm. uh, where it's a flickering not the bread but the chewing and swallowing the making love the joyful exuberance mm. which also describes something of a dynamic quality and aliveness mm. creativity mm. Uh, life itself mm. Mm in all its forms. Mm. What is beautiful, what I find beautiful, is also the, the contrasts in God, uh, who is everything slow and dark and moist. There's this rhythm, slow and dark and moist. So I formulate my image of God God is slow and dark and moist. And then the next line, mm -hmm. who is not measured, controlled, but ecstatic and dancing. Mm. Uh, God mm. is not only this, but God is also that. Uh, mm. Not contained. Mm. Uh, not contained in um, platitudes and pronouncements. Or in certainty. Or in certainty. In answers, not in answers, but in questions, the color of doubt. Mm. Um, not contained in creeds and testimonies, mm. um, which is set in a form and, and almost controls God. Mm. Here again, we touched on it last week where we tend to domesticate or we with without maybe intending it we end up domesticating god mm. in our frame of reference in our wording but this poem shows again the wildness the the naturalness the, yes the, the aliveness yes yes of god yeah yeah And the mystery, to mm. worship at the altar of mystery and lay aside certainty. Mm. It might be that one gets to a point in your life where you aren't certain and where there, where there is a lot of doubt. And it's not as if God is absent in that, but often particularly in those instances, uh, God being present. Mm. I'm going to read it again. Please, can I have a God? Not fossilized, hardened, stiff, unshaken, not contained in creeds and testimonies, judgments and stone tablets, but in the wound breaking open. Please, can I have a God who asks me to worship at the altar of mystery, to lay aside certainty and call up in the hollow of a great stone down by the river, 
to hear the force of it rushing past. Please, can I have a God with questions rather than answers, who is not rock or fortress or father, but sachets, swerves, ripens, rages at the rape of the earth? Please, can I have a God whose voice is the sound of a girl long silent from abuse, now speaking her first word, who is not sweetness or light, but the fierce utterance of no in all the places where love has been extinguished. Please, can I have a God the color of doubt, the shape of uncertainty who sees that within me dwells a multitude, grief and joy, envy and generosity, rage and raucousness and anoints every last part. Please, can I have a God who rolls her eyes with me at platitudes and pronouncements and walks by my side in the early morning across the wet field together barefooted and broken-hearted who is both mud and dew. Please, can I have a God who is the vast indifference of forest and night sky, who is both eclipse and radiance, silence and scream, who is everything slow and dark and moist, who is not measured, controlled, but ecstatic and dancing. Please, can I have a God who is not the flame but the flickering, not bread but the chewing and swallowing, not lover and beloved but the making love, not the dark but the joyful exuberance when I come home. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a good week.